Dragonisa here, and this is my first ever tutorial. How about that? So, uh, today we're going to learn how to edit your pieces if you're a traditional artist. Sounds fun? Great. So, let's do it. So, we have this, um, well, drawing that I did uh, for Gortober this year. And, uh, yeah, we want it to look pretty. What do we do? Well, first of all, we need to crop the image. But first of all, let's see if this is looking even. So my trick to make sure that this page is uh, properly rotated, look at this left side. See, it, it goes a little bit to the right when I scroll it down, right? So we pick the rotate tool, which is over here in the current version of GIMP. I'm using GIMP, by the way. <laughs> I should have mentioned that, probably. Uh, it's a great program to edit your pictures, so I really recommend downloading it. It's free and you can use it. So I rotate it by simply clicking and dragging. And now making sure that this line goes down straight so our piece isn't wonky in shape. I feel like this is correct. Okay, so then we press rotate. It does a job and we have a perfectly straight page. Now, what I do is use the crop tool. I press it and now we can click and drag to create this wonderful thing. And in tool options, make sure that it deletes cropped pixels because otherwise, well, of course it's going to crop the picture, but the rest of the picture will remain to trans transparent and it will just add stuff that you don't need. <laughs> just all the space will be left out and you'll have like this small image on top of like all the transparency. You don't want that, trust me. So delete your cropped pixels. Okay, now I want to make sure that this is uh, cropped how I want it to be. Make sure that this line doesn't overlap. Take a little bit of that, take a little bit of that. You know, you just do your thing. You know? <laughs> okay, now that you're done, you press enter on your keyboard and it's cropped just like that. So. Now we go to like all the swishy tools, right? Like, uh, I don't know, colors, curves, and you do all that. No, 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 no. You don't do any of that shit before you clean the page. So if you zoom in, you can probably see all those dirty particles. Like no matter how well you clean your scanner, they're always going to be here. Those little pesky motherfuckers. So in order to remove them, we use the clone tool. Clone tool is amazing. So, basically, by pressing CTRL and picking the cleanest area on your canvas, you can now clone what, what, what the tool says it does, you know? Uh, you can clone this piece that you selected here, basically, on top of everything else and use it as a brush. Isn't that amazing? As you can see, it moves, so you have to make sure that it doesn't overlap with another one of those motherfuckers, because if I do that, well, I'm gonna create this line that I don't want to hear. You know, it's cloning. You don't want that. <laughs> I mean, you do, but not, not in this case. So now we start doing the tedious task of removing all those little bits and pieces that you don't want on your canvas. You know, you gotta clean it up. It's, it's a job that you gotta do, you know? In cases where something like this little particle here overlaps with your beautiful drawing, you know what you do? You know what you do? You clone. Maybe make the brush a little bit smaller, actually. So in order to make sure that this overlap doesn't, doesn't destroy uh, your beautiful lines, you pick out this side and copy it over to make sure that the overlap just doesn't destroy your piece and then you can clean it up afterwards so now 
enjoy the time lapse of me cleaning up this piece. Oh, before, before the time lapse actually. You want that tool over here to be visible. I like to put it on the side, you can put it everywhere if you want to. In order to do that, you open a Windows, uh, you have uh, Dockable Dialogues, and you choose Navigation. This helps you just simply drag this little frame around the canvas and see all the moving bits and pieces, right? And just to, you can, well, literally navigate what the tool does <laughs> around your canvas with ease. And you can also make sure that, yeah, you cover all the entire picture and you don't miss out anything. <clears throat> what it also helps with, another tip from me that you won't get anything anywhere else. Yeah, sometimes your screen is dirty. So to make sure that you're not going over the same spot over and over again because you have a pesky, dirty spot on your screen, you can navigate. Use the navigate tool to move around and see the dots moving so you know what to remove. Ain't that great? So now onto the time lapse. set the brush to something really soft. It just doesn't have as hard of a contrast and it blends in your brush strokes really well. So yeah, just a little recommendation from me. Okay, now let's look if uh, we got everything. If not, then we'll quickly delete it, but so far so good. I don't think we have anything uh, jarring, or at least too jarring, to remove. Whoop. We missed a spot. There we go. Yeah, to be honest, you always miss some spots, and it's okay. At least they won't be as jarring as if you didn't clean up the piece because, yeah, it really pops up if, once you edit it. So you really want to just make a good job, make sure that all is removed. And if not all, then at least the majority of it. You know, especially if you're impatient, which is okay, you know. So long as you have a roughly clean piece, you know. Okay. I think we're good, actually. After some, uh, some corrections, you know? And that way we can move on to another phase of editing, which is values and all that fun stuff. So let's go to the layers. You can set the windows everywhere you want to. This is just my setup. You want to copy the layer. Always remember to keep that base layer in there just in case you make some mistakes and you don't want that, right? So I have a copy of the base, which I don't touch because it can be useful later. On this copy though, I like to set the mode here on multiply. This is one of those darkening modes which really bumps up the shadows. Just look at the difference. I know, right? It's great. And I feel like this is this is a pretty cool darkness level. I like that. So I had to take away the phone from my cat <clears throat> because he started to bite it for some odd reason because he's dummy. Let's see how it will look like if we copy that layer. This this is a copy layer tool. So this is a little bit too dark, but we can always turn down the opacity to find the perfect level, and I think like 70%, this is perfect. Almost, no. Well, we still want to edit the brightness. We don't want, for example, the canvas to be this gray, right? So we copy the layer once again and set it to addition. This brightens the layer, and it's one of those uh, brightening modes. 
So I set it to 10% and copy this layer. So I have another, another one just in case. And it usually brightens the layer beautifully. So now what I do, because once you zoom in, like you can see all those pixels and how rough that is. And if you're going for that look, that's great. But I personally don't like it too much. I'm just showing you how I edit the pieces, you know, you'll do with it whatever you want because this is your art and you do you, as always. So what I do to make it a little bit softer, I go to filters, go over to blur and do median blur. I turn the radius to one so it's not too harsh. 100% off percentile and the percentile I set usually to 35 and then press OK. Now GIMP has this cool option to repeat whatever you've done perfectly as you did it before. So I usually do it with a shortcut which is displayed here, Ctrl plus F, and I do it on all the layers in between. See, that's why I left this layer, because I don't want to edit it, I want it to be as is. So I have all the layers now edited, and now I can play with it a little bit, you know? So for example, I don't know, I want to bump up shadows a little bit more, because I'm fucking crazy like that. Let's go to curves. Now we do all the fun. And let's see. So once I move this dot around, this basically sets the darkest tone to whatever tone is on this graph here. Well, this graph doesn't really show much, but once I drag it all the way to the right, you can see that even the white got darkened significantly, and this looks ugly, so we don't do that. I want it to be a little bit more harsh. And we can still curve this line. I recommend not to do too many points because this can really mess it up. Uh, I don't know how to remove them. Okay, uh, let's just start over. <laughs> okay, let's do it a little bit darker here and for a better contrast, I'll bump up the white just so the canvas is brighter and all the highlights are just popping, you know, it, it's it's great, trust me. <laughs> so I do that, sometimes I do this on this layer, so I'll do the Ctrl F right now, mm, and it doesn't look too great, huh? So let's turn down the opacity, and that's why I'll also keep this layer just in case, you know? and just control it a little bit more, and I don't think I like that, so I'm gonna always Rewind. And this is basically it. I think I like it. I think it's a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna move that multiply layer a little bit down, you know, to 60%. I feel like this is good. And I can bump up the addition layer maybe by 5% opacity. And this, I feel like, is the perfect balance over here. So you might wonder why don't I just bump up this whole layer? Well, remember what we did with the median blur, right? Uh, sometimes it's a little bit too harsh, especially if I do it on all the layers. So I like to give it a little bit more texture with that not too harsh, that's why this layer is on 10% and I'm not changing that. But it uh, kind of preserves some of the pixels that I lost by blurring them, basically. Mm, let me sh try and just bump it up to similar brightness. Like, I don't know if you can see the difference, but it, it makes the difference, trust me. It's, it, it's slight, but it, but it's there. and it, 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 it is what matters. <laughs> That's why, also, if I change the opacity of this one, and, it, 
and all that stuff. Uh, I want to keep that in there, just in case, you know, so, so, so it remains the texture a little bit more. And that's basically it. That's all I do to the picture. Later on, I just save it and all the, do all the good stuff, you know, export it. So, yeah. Basically, we went from this to this. Isn't it so much better? Like, it pops, the contrast is just on point. I hope it helps if you're a traditional artist trying to make your pieces look, you know, presentable. And, yeah, I'm glad if I could help. I hope you have a great day. Love you. Nixie. Out.